We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. Hey guys, I want to welcome you guys to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. We've got a great episode this week. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button as well as the notifications bell and be sure to like, comment, and share if you like this episode and we'll get into this week's sponsor and show. This week's episode is sponsored by CityVest. CityVest has quickly become the most popular and best way for doctors to invest in top performing real estate private equity funds that are usually reserved for institutional investors. This unique access to investing in these institutional funds is available for the first time ever through CityVest easy and secure online investment platform. CityVest does the hard work of conducting due diligence and vetting the investments. They even get a third-party due diligence report that is posted on their website. As a result of aggregating a several million dollar investment amount into their access funds, CityVest gains access to investing in the institutional investment and is able to negotiate better investment terms such as a 12% preferred return. You can check them out at cityvest.com or go to the link in the show notes below. Now on to the show. Before we begin today's content, here is a quick disclaimer. The information and material presented here is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. The content is not a recommendation to buy or to sell. Some of the content may be for credited investors only or may be sponsored posts. Every investment carries risks. Results have not been verified. So carefully weigh those risks against your investment goals and objectives and see if acting on the information matches with your investment thesis. Do your due diligence prior to investing. And as always, do not invest more than you can afford to lose. So welcome everybody to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. And I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I talk about four types of freedom, time, financial, location, emotional freedom. And I've opened up my reach and my audience to include entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches, and consultants. So today we have a very special guest and I'll let him introduce himself, but um, Briefly, he's uh, Gordon Stein, and he's a wealth speaker, and he's the author of the Cash Flow Cookbook, and he's going to talk all about finances, especially why high-income professionals need to really focus on their finances in addition to their careers. So, Gordon, welcome. A oh, pleasure to be here, Chris. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know we were talking backstage and um, getting introduced. And um, what I find fascinating is that, um, you know, especially in the area of financial literacy, uh, you know, a lot of us devoted so much time and, you know, money to our careers, we never really focused on our finances. So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you get started, what you do, and we'll go from there. Well, that sounds terrific. Thank you. Um, Well, I spent about 35 years in the high tech uh, industry, senior executive sales, marketing, and operations, companies like Dell and Apple. Uh, But I've always been very interested in personal finance. And I've often found that I have, you know, large numbers of uh, young people uh, reporting to me. And they'd often say, you know, lunchtime conversations, hey, tell me about how do you build wealth? How do you get ahead? All these kinds of things. And so I had that in my mind. And um, several years ago, I found a way of getting car washes for free. That I found kind of intriguing, not that it saved much, you know, $25 a month. Um, and then I found a way to slash the cost of my home alarm monitoring. And so this whole thing, this whole process got me curious because here's a couple of ways of freeing up cash, but they were no more difficult than, you know, the normal way. Um, and, you know, $50, no big deal. Um, but it got me curious and I started a list of ways to reduce the cost of just about everything. 
And the whole category was minimal effort, minimal sacrifice. So the list became a spreadsheet. And then I calculated the future value of making these savings and what would it be worth over time. The numbers were astronomical. I took it to my accountant to check for errors. And he said, you know what? This would make a great book. So that was the start of, uh, of the book. And I was going to write it as a novel. It just didn't fit as a novel. And under my breath one day, I said, gee, it's more like a cookbook. And it became the Cashflow Cookbook. And Cashflow Cookbook uh, began in Canada, which is where I'm from originally. Um, and then it became a newspaper column. I had the book out, became a Kindle edition. And now that I'm living in the United States, I just released the U.S. edition of Cashflow Cookbook on Amazon as well as the Kindle edition. So I spent a lot of time speaking on financial freedom uh, in both the United States and in Canada. Yeah, yeah, that's a fantastic story. And we'll get into the, um, you know, the central thesis of the book and everything. And um, so I know you talk about, um, you know, financial freedom. And so I, for the listeners, um, they're probably wondering how can, you know, the someone who's not in a high income job, or, you know, they're kind of getting along, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. So how can average people find a path to financial freedom? Well, I think if you look at the traditional, you know, books, literature on financial wellness, they stress the same things over and over again. One of them is, you know, saving at least 10% of your gross income. Second one is careful budgeting. And the third one is giving up things that you love. So if we go through the list, um, most people earning $50,000 a year will say, yeah, I just don't have that 10% of my gross. What's interesting is those earning $500,000 a year will also say, I just don't have that 10% of my gross to save. So there's the first insight. Second insight is that budgeting is just not a lot of fun. In particular, if you're half of a couple, um, the idea of saying to your spouse, hey, let's spend the weekend, do some detailed financial budgeting. That tends not to be a big marriage enhancer. And uh, <laughs> thirdly, you know what? No one wants to give up things that they love. So the whole premise and where I think this is really groundbreaking is that Cashflow Cookbook has financial recipes to free up $13,000 of monthly expenses. So it's about reducing costs in every category of spend, including uh, housing, transportation, food, household, lifestyle, and financial. Every bill, every expense can be reduced and you can do it quite dramatically. And what's interesting is there's ways of doing it with minimal effort and minimal sacrifice. So nobody wants to sacrifice anything. And I personally don't sacrifice anything. But the whole premise behind the book is it's kind of book one. It goes in front of every other uh, investment book. It tells you how to free up that 10% or 15 or 20%. And when you do that, you can start to really accelerate your wealth and move towards financial freedom. Yeah, that's one. So what I, what you're talking about is um, there's a couple ways to uh, one is increase income or and then the other is to decrease your expenses. So mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting. And, you know, you know, what if the average listener was like, oh, well, I love my Starbucks or, um, you know, I, I love my movies or my Netflix. So is there a way to financial wellness without budgeting? Well, I absolutely think there is. And, you know, I'll tell you, you know, uh, if I feel like another guitar, I go get myself a really beautiful one. I've got a whole wall of them behind me. Um, you know, if I want to go kayaking, get a great, I get a great kayak. If I want to go see the Eagles in concert, I get great seats. So I think you want to have a fabulous lifestyle. I think you can. But you know what? I would say this. If I cut my electricity bill in my house in half, it doesn't affect my lifestyle one bit. Or if I reduce the cost of my cell phones, my car insurance, my home insurance, all of these things, um, they're not fun bills. And if you reduce them, they don't change your lifestyle, but they just free up a lot of cash. You can take that cash and invest it. And if you can do that, you know, adding a thousand, two thousand, or even three thousand dollars to your uh, monthly investments, that's a massive difference in your wealth. So not unusual that people are able to use my book, Cashflow Cookbook. And add another million, two million, three million, four million dollars to their wealth at retirement. Nice. I, I really I like that. It's kind of like you just, you know, you sort of put it away and it's sort of not not very noticeable. And then over time it grows and compounds. And then um 
I was reading an article. Um, it was saying that the number one um, uh, fear uh, of most Americans is, you know, running out of money in retirement. So, uh, and that, that's, you know, especially after the last two years, a lot of, you know, financial stress and uh, what's, you know, for the listeners, what's the first step to reduce financial stress? Well, you know, again, there's lots of different theories in the book and cash flow cookbook. I go through a number of these steps and we follow this couple, Eric and Keisha, and they make these financial discoveries one by one. And I list them as kind of power tips. So we're watching them as they make these discoveries. They make some very simple changes to their finances. And over the course of that opening story, which is only a handful of pages, they add an additional million and a half to their wealth. And the first step uh, for me, I believe the first step, I call it broiling a bill. So lots of puns, cooking puns and cash flow cookbook. <laughs> but the idea is uh, you take one bill and in the book, I lay out exactly like a financial recipe, exactly how to lower each and every bill that people face. So you can do it quite simply. Often it takes less than a half an hour. <clears throat> you free up a hundred or $200 a month. Uh, and there's 60 recipes in there. So some of them are as small as $25 a month, simple changes to make. And again, uh, easy to get started. And some of them are three, four, five, six hundred dollars a month. But all simple changes to make and the whole premise is, you know, minimal effort, minimal sacrifice. So when you talked about something like the Starbucks latte, which is a favorite of uh, financial writers, everybody goes after the, the uh, Starbucks latte. I sometimes joke that it's not just the latte that gets whipped and frost, you know. So, uh, you know, you might look at it and you may not think much of it. I think I do think it's worthwhile to do a calculation on how much you're spending in total and what would that be worth to you, uh, you know, over 20 or 30 years. And maybe if you do that, you might decide you want to give it up. But there's lots of ways to do it without giving up anything that would be, you know, meaningful for you. Yeah. So we start with broiling a bill. That's always step one for me. OK, nice, nice, nice. Um and in like in the in the I know you talk a reference to book a lot in mm -hmm. those uh, the book you know the book will be including the show notes. We hope you don't mind this brief interruption from one of our affiliates. Today's affiliate is studentloanadvice.com. Studentloanadvice.com is a company powered by the White Coat Investor that specializes in helping professional students such as doctors, dentists, and other healthcare professionals navigate the complex and oftentimes confusing student loan landscape. They offer a consultation as well as services to help you save money when consolidating and paying back your student loans through their different options. You can go to their website, studentloanadvice.com forward slash FFF. P. That's again, studentloanadvice.com forward slash FFFP to find out more, get signed up on their email list or schedule a call with Andrew Paulson. Now back to our show. For listeners, what, what is the most important number to track in their, in their budgeting or their finances? Well, I take a bit of a different view. <clears throat> a lot of people focus on this idea of a monthly budget. And monthly budgets aren't fun. And inevitably, there's expenses that come up. You know, the cat needs to go to the vet. You know, your child loses all of his, you know, hockey or football gear. You got to replace it. You know, an appliance goes, the roof needs repair. So they're, they're notoriously different to follow. But I also think they have some flaws. So as an example, if in your budget, you say, geez, you know, I've got a budget of, let's say, $650 a month for a car payment. Well, if you go to a car dealer, and they ask what your budget is, and you say, well, I've got $650 a month, they'll, so, they'll say, great, they'll get you into a fabulous car, and maybe it's on a 96-month loan, which is not unusual now. But this isn't a great thing for your wealth. It fit into your monthly budget, but it's probably having a really negative impact on your wealth because the car dealer can just go to a longer and longer loan, or they can put you in a lease where you don't own anything at the end of the lease but you're not really helping your wealth. So I think a better number to track is your wealth. And if you think about it, you know, if you want to lose weight, what do you measure? You measure your weight. If you want to increase your wealth, the thing to track is your wealth. And what does that mean? It's the difference of what you own minus what you owe. 
So what you own, your home, your vehicles, uh, those kinds of things, you know, your 401k, your Roth IRA, those are all things that you own. Subtracting what you owe, credit card debt, mortgages, car loans, all these things. And when you do that subtraction, you end up with your wealth. And I think it's really important. A great number for people to track is this wealth number. And do the math on that every month for a year. And I think if you do that, it changes your whole headspace because you'll start to say, geez, I really need, if I could lower my expenses, I could free up more cash for investment. I could grow that wealth number faster. Same thing is true of paying down debt. So if we track our wealth, I think it changes our whole headspace and starts to really increase our wealth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's very fast because I've, I've heard different camps. I heard the net worth um, approach, which is you're talking about. And uh, I've also heard the passive income approach where it's, you know, you're um, measuring it, you're, you're basically your time and your financial freedom through the amount of passive income that you come. So what, what, what are your thoughts? I know there's, cause personal finances, there's so many ways to go, uh, go about it and attack it. So um, what about, you know, passive um, income, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, there's no question. And I think it's all, I think one is a path to get to the other one. So let's say, for example, that you make a change in your spending. One of the examples I can give you, and we'll get into the details in a moment, but let's say that you had, for example, a chronic condition and you need some prescription drugs and either, you know, you don't have a drug plan or maybe this runs over the cost of your uh, deductibles, et cetera. But let's say that you've got an opportunity by shopping a little bit smarter for prescription drugs, minimal effort, minimal sacrifice, and you're able to free up, say, $200 a month. Now, if you take that $200 and you invest that in some securities or it could be real estate or whatever it is, now that money is working for you. Before, if you're giving it to a drugstore, it's providing no benefit to you whatsoever. But if you could free up that cash, and there's all kinds of different examples, we'll do lots of them in a minute. Um, if you could free up that cash, get that money working for you. It could be a rental property, it could be a real estate investment trust, it could be dividend paying shares, it could be lots of different things. That's exactly where you're going is if you have that wealth, you can put it to use and that is gonna give you back that passive income. Now, maybe you wanna build that up so you're accumulating wealth and that would be the case if you're investing for the long haul or maybe you want it in some sort of a vehicle that makes regular disbursements. But either way, you're gonna get to that passive income. The key is getting the money for free, which you can do by reducing some of these bills. Yeah. Yeah, so what you're, we're going from savings um, to investing. You know, we'll talk about, I know we'll talk about, you know, interest rates and, you know, banks paying less than, um, you know, for the book was what's really interesting is, um, you know, where you talk about savings and cutting your expenses. Um, and I know you do a lot of research. What, what was the most interesting thing you learned from, you know, the savings area? Oh, there's so many of them and, and they all fall in such different categories. Um, you know, the biggest thing is how simple it is. I'll, I'll give you maybe two or three examples, uh, Chris, if that'd be helpful. Yeah, yeah. So one is a personal one that just happened to be recently um, and, you know, recently moved to the U.S., and uh, prescription drug prices here are, they're shockingly high, much higher than they are in Canada. Remarkably, most of the drugs come from the US. So that's another whole story to be solved. But, you know, I had to get a uh, statin pill to lower my cholesterol. And um, so I went to the drugstore, which was, you know, directly uh, below my doctor on the ground floor, as they often are. And so I went to get my statin pills. Um, and I had the prescription filled $107. A month. And I have to take these pills for the rest of my life. So not that $107 is a massive sum, but you know what, it's, it's material if it's an ongoing expense, which it is. So I said to the pharmacist, I said, gee, that's a little expensive. It's just, why don't you get on our, our drug plan? I said, well, how's that work? It's $20 a year and your prescription goes from $107 to $63 a month. So I'm thinking to myself, there's a $500 a month savings for $20 you know, $500 a year savings for just this $20 card. So I was quite pleased with myself for just asking this one simple question. And I was telling the story to my brother-in-law and uh, he said, oh, no, no. He says, you want to get your drugs from one of the online retailers. So I checked that out, uh, entered the data when I got home to one of the, the one he recommended, $13 a month for the prescription. 
So I've gone from 107 to 63 to 13. So I thought, well, obviously we're not done. So I did some more research, ended up with an online uh, pharmacy. I get these pills delivered to my home for $7 a month. No. So it's a great illustration. That was a hundred dollars. You know, that's not a huge amount of money, but there's dozens of these and they're all spelled out in detail in cash flow cookbook. And so that one was really something. Uh, if you see people, you know, lineups at all the major drug stores all across the U S people getting their prescriptions and they might be paying, uh, you know, 10 times as much as they need to be paying for these prescription drugs. So there's a very, very simple change uh, that was surprising. Yeah, uh, that's, I like that. Uh, um, and I really like the central thesis where you're just like little expenses, if you can save here and there, they'll add up. And um, we'll shift on to um, interest rates. And so, you know, banks paying, you know, I guess a couple months ago, paying less than 1%, you know, it's still, you know, 1%, 2%, nothing compared to, you know, what we see at the gas pump or the grocery mm-hmm. store. So, uh, how can people earn more interest on their savings, um, you know, when bank, banks are paying, you know, these horrible rates? Well, it's funny, literally every time I do a speaking engagement and I'm speaking on cash flow cookbook in Canada and the U.S. every single time, uh, I, you know, run through my examples and I show the growth in wealth and I use 7% as an investment rate. Um, and I always get the question, people say, well, geez, how do you get 7%? Because my bank only pays you know, half a percent. Um, and if you you know, have large sums of money in your bank at a half a percent, you're literally falling backwards these days by about seven and a half percent a year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a, a great place for short term money. But over the long haul, you really need to have it invested in something that's a producing asset. So it could be, you know, you own part of a shopping center, or apartment building, something like that, some sort of a real estate investment, or it could be in the stock market high quality blue chip things over the long haul. Um, And if you look at it, you know, people say, how do you get 7%? That's not realistic. If you look at the history of the S&P 500, the largest 500 equities uh, in the US stock market, um, if you look at its performance since its inception, it's well over 9%, including the dividends. So the answer is, you know, you really, it's a long-term thing. You know, if you look at when COVID happened, it plunged by about 30%, which is shocking. But again, over the long term, all of those blips get erased out. You know, we had a huge plunge uh, during 9-11, horrible event that it was. But if you look at the chart now, that blip is, is, you almost can't see it in the chart, even though it was devastating at the time. So the answer is you need to be invested in long-term producing kinds of assets, real estate, equities, bonds, et cetera, uh, to get a much better rate over the long term than you would with bank interest. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, this has been a great discussion. And I know, um, uh, you know, some of the key takeaways um, for some of the listeners, such as, you know, what three changes could our listeners make today to build wealth? Mm-hmm. Sure, um, lots of them. Well, I would start uh, with the, if you take a look at my blog posts uh, that I have up at cashflowcookbook.com, but really it's about, I would start by listing out all of those recurring monthly bills and I would start reducing every single one of them because they can all be reduced. And that's what's surprising for people. As an example, uh, if you take car insurance, so you can go online, there's uh, there's a number, I list them all on my website. There's a number of these uh, engines where you can go online and compare your car insurance. And I would say in a typical situation with, you know, two or three uh, vehicles, two or three drivers in a home, if you've got older teenagers, what have you, not unusual to be able to save two or $300 a month just by going back and reshopping your car insurance. There's a great place to start. And once you do that, um, you're going to be really surprised. You're going to see this money. And then right away, I call it savor the savings in the book. You want to put that money to work. So as soon as you do something like reshop your car insurance, right away, you want to contact your wealth advisor, uh, increase your monthly payments. If you're swimming in debt, you want to use that window to pay things down. And then you'll see the difference as you track your wealth. I can give you a couple other examples, if you like, of uh, some saving things that people don't think about. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So one that was really quite surprising, and I missed it for the first few printings uh, of the book, and that is credit rating. And um, a lot of people don't know what their credit score is. They don't pay much attention to it. 
So in that way, it's kind of stealthy. It's not like you're, you know, you're buying your Starbucks coffee or something. But um, there's lots of people who are quite well to do, but they don't always pay their bills uh, on time. They, you know, they let it slide a little bit. Um, or maybe there's an error on their credit report, which is surprisingly common. But what can happen is with a poor credit score, you can be paying 70% more interest over the course of a loan or a mortgage, 70% more. And it can lead to an increase of 30 to 50% on your car insurance and 30 to 50% on your home insurance. Mm -hmm. So it's worthwhile to use one of the tools, take a look at your credit score, make sure there's no errors in the report and make sure you're optimizing it because it's very stealthy. You might be paying significantly more. It can mean a difference of hundreds of dollars a month and people don't even realize it. Wow, that's wow. Yeah, you've given you've given so many uh, good examples and a lot of um, you know action steps to take. Um, definitely, the book will probably has a lot more. Uh, so I know a lot of people are interested in you know finding out more about you, contacting you, you know, looking at the book and possibly working with you. So how can they do that? Sure. So um, a great place to start is my website, which is cashflowcookbook.com. Uh, there's all kinds of content in there. There's about 60 blog posts that I've got up with ideas of savings on all kinds of things. Everything is free on the website. Uh, there's nothing to buy. Uh, there's no spamming. There's nothing. I, I'd recommend subscribing to the blog posts. Um, so that's one place to get started. You can get a copy of Cashflow Cookbook uh, on Amazon. Uh, there's both a U.S. and a Canadian edition up there, both in paperback and in Kindle editions. So that's, an, that's probably the best single investment you can make in your wealth. People always say, what's the best investment? Knowledge is always the best investment. Uh -huh. um, so you can have a look at Cashflow Cookbook, uh, the book itself that's up there. Um, and I also do a lot of speaking. So if you have a group, uh, maybe it's a group of doctors or entrepreneurs, and you want me to come and speak about Cashflow Cookbook and how to free up all of this cash flow, I usually talk about how to add a million or more to your wealth at retirement. So I'm available for speaking engagements and you can find that uh, on my website again at cashflowcookbook.com. Awesome. And all of, to all of the listeners, um, Gordon's references and resources will be included in the show notes. So thanks very much for coming on to the show and we look forward to hearing about your future successes. A real pleasure. Thank you so much, Chris. I enjoy being with you. What a fantastic show. I hope you enjoyed our very special guest. Just remember, as a shout out to our this week's sponsor, CityVest.com. CityVest gives you access to the best real estate private equity funds with enhanced investment terms, verified due diligence, and lower risk. You can check them out at CityVest.com or click on the link in the show notes below to hear about their upcoming investment offerings. If you enjoyed that episode, don't forget, that's just the free content. We also have paid premium content subscription with better guests, information, updates, and discussions that can't be accessed anywhere else. You can subscribe to our premium content by clicking on the link in the show notes below to just subscribe. Just a quick note, members who sign up for the bottom floor price introductory the first year will be grandfathered into that price for life. I expect the monthly subscription amount to increase quickly next year and the year after, so don't delay. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, www.drchrislewmdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week.